Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Central Illinois Regional, checking in team number 2338, gear it forward. This team has been a team we've been following for a lot of years here as they've been building great machines. Their robot has been very consistent here at CIR so far, so can't wait to talk more about it. And to help me do so, I have Aaron, Rohan, and Robert. And of course, we'll be following that full cargo journey through the robot up into their climber, a great well-made machi machine coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. First updates now is supported by Kettering University. Kettering University hosts three co-op employment fairs each year for incoming and current students. Participating in the co-op employment process at Kettering is a great way to begin turning robotics experience into a professional career to earn money towards graduating debt-free. If you are a senior, it's not too late to apply at kettering.edu slash apply. Competition season is here. Head on over to thebluelines.com to catch all the events each week. Don't forget to submit your clips of the week to discord.gg forward slash first updates now. Vote in the FRC Top 25 and play in our free fantasy pick'em. Catch fun shows live on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. And we're going to start with the intake on your robot here. Uh, you guys have a very wide intake that's been working really well for uh, collecting cargo. Talk to you about some of the iterations that you've gone through throughout the build season and uh, talk about your product here now. So. Part of our iteration process is actually looking at our robots from past years. So with our 2020 robot, we had a uh, very good mechanism intake that uh, was centered through the middle, uh, that would center the balls in, uh, on the ground itself. We decided that during this game, that, would, that wouldn't really go for us, right? So we decided to go with an over-the-bumper intake because we were suspecting defense to be tough, and that really went well for us. So we kind of combined our 2020 design with our, uh, a new design here where we uh, had tr some compliant wheels to get the ball off the ground and mechanism wheels to center it into our indexer. So if we're, we'll uh, here, okay, yeah. Rohan here will demonstrate that for you and it just rolls right into our indexer. Uh, during the match, obviously you have some pneumatics on it. Do you find yourself bringing in your intake a lot during the match or you just kind of leave it out the whole time? We try to bring it in as much as we can. With uh, how tough defense is this year, we're really seeing uh, some difficulty and we want to minimize damage that we're taking. So we want to make our parts last as long as we can. We've got a uh, backup intake made, um, but uh, we really, we're really looking to keep this one good as for as long as we can. Absolutely. Well, Rohan, let's go next into your uh, indexing area. Talk to me about uh, any sensors that have gone into it, like if you're detecting cargo. And of course, it uh, looks like you got a little bit of an S-curve going on too. Talk to me about the benefits of that. Yeah, so the really nice thing about having this S-curve is that for one, we can um, easily collect and then shoot from the other side. So if we're going back, we can easily just collect the balls without um, risk of losing them by just um, force of gravity, getting overwhelmed. Instead, we can have them nice and compressed inside the indexer and we can easily dispense them out, out of the other side. Along this, we have a few sensors. Um, all, none of them are color sensing. However, all of them will just return the value of the, or return a Boolean value, sorry. And from this value, we determine where the balls are. We have three along the curve. One is just to see w where the initial ball is. The second is to um, actually gauge a spe uh, specific ball here. And another is to gauge a specific ball here. With these, we try to say, hey, if there's a ball in a lower position and not one in a higher position, let's push it up with the motors. If not, let's um, leave it there. Um, and, and that's mostly it. With the amount of uh, ball travel you have, that sort of thing, with this type of curve, uh, have you been able to mitigate like any sort of jamming or anything like that because of it? Um, yeah, so the really nice thing we were able to do is we have only one truly solid side with the plexiglass here. And on the other side, we're just mostly using churros to help support it. And what this allows is that it allows for a little bit of compression from one side and an even smooth cur uh, velocity transition to the other side. The belt here is probably the biggest factor into that. What it does is that it uses an even P and F value in terms of PID to get the ball to the um, shooter at an even nice velocity to get nice results. Let's bring Aaron back in here to talk about your shooter as we go into that. Uh, looks like you got uh, pneumatic on there, go a couple different positions. So I'd love to hear about uh, what's going on in your shooter and then uh, if you have any like sweet spots on the field you like to shoot from too. Oh, for sure. Yeah, we've got plenty of sweet spots from the field that we like to shoot from. Let me tell you a little bit about the design process of this shooter though. Uh, we decided to put the uh, uh, adjustable hood in here. In 2021, we went with a belt-driven adjustable hood that could go to multiple positions. Uh, but this year we decided it would be nice to just have two positions for our hood, so we have an up position and a down position, and uh, varying flywheel velocities. We have uh, set points uh, along the field for where we like to shoot from, so we like to shoot from uh, 
the what we call the ring shot. So those are just outside the tarmac uh, on the place that the uh, balls are placed on uh, at the beginning of the match. We like to shoot from there. Uh, we also like to shoot from, of course, the launch pad and right up against the uh, hub. And we can shoot all the way from the back wall as well. Let's wrap up in your robot talking about your climber. Robert, you're going to be talking a bit more about what goes into it. Uh, your team has been doing a great traversal climb here so far. So talk me about some of the different stages and maybe we can demo some of that as well. Yeah, so our first stage when we get by the climber is we have this elevator right here that goes, that sends up this uh, bar up with these hooks. The hooks have the ability to slide right past the bar to help with lining up, um, but cannot go up. So we maintain stability on the bar. Then for our next stages to reach to the next bar, we have these set of arms, which are actuated with pneumatics to go to two set positions along certain angles, and these hooks uh, that spring up to catch the next bar. They'll go out and with the hooks up and catch the next bar that will, we will then release using this, the elevator, and fall onto the hooks before sending the elevator back up again to grab the next bar. And we just repeat that process until we get to the transversal. Uh, when you're looking at it from a design perspective, like how did packaging of your climber kind of fit into your entire robot? Um, we knew that we needed it near the center to get a good center of gravity on the robot so that it wouldn't swing very much, and we knew that the bottom of our robot would be very heavy. So a big element of our design was making sure that our hooks and our swinging arm uh, could take the weight of the robot. Um, another big element was making sure that these hooks were able to fold and move properly and align with these hooks so that when we got up there, we weren't stuck or binding in any positions. Well, Gear 4, 2338 has been the uh, powerhouse in Midwest for a long time, and uh, we appreciate you speaking with your team every single year. So good luck here at Central Illinois Regional. Of course, look forward to seeing your robot in future competitions. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Kettering University hosts three co-op employment fairs each year for incoming and current students. Participating in the co-op employment process at Kettering is a great way to begin turning robotics experience into a professional career to earn money towards graduating debt-free. If you are a senior, it's not too late to apply at kettering.edu slash apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.